In my first lesson, I'm going to teach you a little bit about the GIMP interface, how to zoom and pan around an image efficiently, and how to customize GIMP in a way that works best for you. This is the first step in learning how to create more involved edits like what you see here. If you like any of the images you see here, be sure to check out the tutorials on my website linked in the description area below. So the first thing we're going to want to do is start up GIMP. So I'm just going to click on my start menu, click on GIMP. Okay, now you'll notice that my interface looks a little different than your interface probably looks. And that's because I customized mine to work best for me. And that's what I'm here to teach you, is how to customize yours to work best for you. Uh, first off, I want to show you the different dockable dialogues. If you click on Windows and then click on Dockable Dialogues, there is a whole plethora of various dockable dialogues. And a dockable dialogue is nothing more than a box with tools and different things, options and such, to help you edit your photos, um, such as layers, channels, paths. I will go into detail on a lot of these in the future, but what I recommend you do now, after this video is done, is explore these different dockable dialogues, understand what some of them do, and decide if you're going to use that or not in the future, and simply just uh, add it to your different dockable or your different docks here and here. Now there's several different ways to dock a dockable dialogue. First off, you can simply click on this arrow here on any of these. There's one here, there's one here. And if you click add tab, you can click on any of these. Let's say I wanted to add fonts. You can just click on fonts and it'll add it. So you can see now I have five tabs instead of four. Now if you want to remove one, you can simply click on this arrow again and click close tab. That'll remove it. Now there's another way to do this. Let's say I wanted to move my paintbrush tool box here, which is actually your tool options dockable dialog. Um, you can click this and drag it and drop it on any tab or even over here in this dockable dialog box. And whenever you do that, it will take that dialog box and move it to that one. Now I would do that and I would show you how that's done but for whatever reason, my recording software stops me from being able to do that, so I can't show it to you. You're just going to have to trust me. So that pretty well explains the different dockable dialogues and a couple of ways to you know, modify those and change those and arrange those around. Uh, next up, what I'm going to show you how to do is zoom and pan efficiently around an image. So I'm going to click on File, and I'm going to create a new document to show you this. I'm just going to leave the settings back to the default settings because it really doesn't matter. And I'm going to go ahead and just add some stuff to this picture so you can clearly see what's zooming and what's panning and have an understanding of what's going on there. So now, first off, for zooming, the most obvious one is the zoom tool. If you just click on that and you draw a rectangle, you'll notice that it'll zoom in at whatever that rectangle is that you just drew. This is very similar to most other programs. I'm sure you've got a pretty good understanding of that just at one look. Now, if you left click just once without dragging, it'll zoom in on the center of your mouse. If you hold in the control key and click, it'll zoom out based on the center of your mouse. Now, there's also the option to, let's say you're not using the zoom tool. Let's say you've got your brush tool out and you're, you're just painting and you want to zoom out. You can hit the minus key on your keyboard to zoom out or the plus key to zoom in. Now one thing I want to warn you is the plus and minus keys, you have to make sure that you're using the ones on the number pad, not the ones in between the zero and backspace key on your keyboard. And the reason why is because the plus key uh, between the zero and backspace is only active whenever you're holding in shift. So if you want to hold in shift and hit plus every time, be my guess, but it's so much easier to just use the number pad. Uh, another thing is if you're holding control, shift, and press E, it'll zoom to fit the window. Now let's say I'm zoomed way out. I'm hitting the minus key to zoom way out in the space. If you hold in control, shift, and press E, it'll zoom back in to make it fit in the screen. And that works the other way around. If you're zoomed way in, control, shift, E, zooms it back to extents. If you forget the plus, minus, and control, shift, E shortcut keys, you can always just click view, zoom, fit image to window, zoom in and zoom out. They're all right here. And you can even see they even put the shortcut keys right over to the right to explain to you what those, you know, the shortcut key that is linked to that. 
So now there's one more zoom method of zooming that I personally prefer, and that's with the uh, scroll bar on your mouse. So if you hold in the control key and you roll your scroll bar forward, it'll zoom out. If you roll it backward, it'll zoom. I'm sorry, I said that backwards. If you roll your zoom key forward, it'll zoom in. If you roll it backwards, it'll zoom out. And it also zooms about the center of your mouse cursor. So you can zoom out, zoom in, zoom out, zoom in by rolling in and rolling out. Uh, I tend to use that in combination with the Control Shift E shortcut. It's really a much faster and easier way to get around GIMP. Now, about panning, there's two primary ways to do this, and one of which is again with your mouse. If you're zoomed in, again I was holding a control and I rolled my mouse forward and that zoomed me in. If you click and hold in that mouse button, it'll let you pan. As long as you're holding it in and you're moving your mouse, it will pan around your picture for you. So let me zoom out a little bit so you can see more clearly. You can see how that's working. Now there's another way to do that, and that's by clicking on this little you know, this little button down here. If you click on this and hold it in, it'll let you navigate your picture. So that's kind of interesting. And I think that's the only two ways to pan. Uh, there may be another way. I'm not entirely sure. But regardless, those are probably the easiest two ways to do it. So now I'm going to show you the top menu, which as you know, it's right here. You can click on this just like any other program. But here's a neat thing that's unique to GIMP. If you right click anywhere in space, ever, it'll bring up that menu for you. So let's say I wanted to access the tools menu. If you right click in space, click tools, there it is. It's the same exact menu as what you have up here. Only thing is, is you didn't have to move your mouse all the way up here and click on it and then go all the way back. So that that's uh, pretty handy and it'll help speed you up if you so desire. Okay, now if you look in the bottom left corner right here, as I'm moving around the screen, you'll see that, that those two numbers changes. That's a coordinate axis system, your X and Y axis. Um, it doesn't really come in too often, but there are some tools such as the zoom blur effect and a couple other tools that I'll show you later and in other tutorials that needs to use that coordinate system. It uses that as a reference point for something. So just understand that that's there and if you're ever using a tool that needs a X and a Y axis, you can use that to find the exact point that you want to go from so you, by you know hovering over, looking at your uh, coordinate axis, and then keeping that in mind for reference for your tools later. Now there's another neat thing, and that's the rulers up here. Here across the top, and here across the left side. Um, those are pretty handy for a number of things. Really, mostly it's for a reference give you an understanding, okay, so I am, you know, 600 pixels to the right of zero, which zero is right here. Zero, zero. And as it moves over it, you see what I mean? It gives you a reference for your coordinates. Now, those rulers have one very handy thing, and that's if you click on a ruler and you drag, it's going to create a line. Now, this line is just a reference line. It's not a part of the image. It's merely there for myself, for me to be able to pick up on something. Uh, let's say if you're a painter and you're doing a single point perspective, you can use this as your focal point. So now, and the biggest thing is that's handy about that is your brushes and everything will snap to these lines. So if you're trying to create a focal point, it snaps to those intersections and everything perfectly. This is also really handy for people trying to create layouts web designs, all kinds of stuff like that. Uh, I used one for brochure, brochure design not too long ago. I used the vertical lines to reference where the brochure folded so that I didn't accidentally cross over. Now these uh, these lines, better known as guides, you can also remove those and that's with the move tool. If you click on your move tool, you have to make sure it's set to pick an active layer or guide, 
you can click on a guide, it'll turn red, and drag it out back to the ruler and it gets rid of it. Or just off the image for that matter, it'll get rid of it. Um, I think there's another way to do it. Maybe it's in image, yeah, image guides. You can also click remove all guides and that'll get rid of all your guides at one time. You can also click new guide by percent and what this does is it'll open up a dialog box that'll let you decide where you want your guide. This is great for, uh, let's say you want to get two guides to put dead smack in the middle of your image. You can put 50% horizontal and hit OK and that'll put a guide dead smack in the center and then if you want you can also do a vertical guide. So image, guides, new guide, set it to vertical, hit OK. See that? Now you've got a perfect intersection in the middle to give you a great reference for the future. And then I'm just going to drag those off or if I wanted I could also click image, guides, remove all guides. Uh, guides can also be hidden Yeah, show guides. It's control shift T is the shortcut key. So if you have some guides out and you don't want them visible, you can hold in control, hold in shift, and hold in and then press the T key. It'll hide them and show them. It's really handy because you know you don't always want those things in the way. And one last thing is the tab key. If you press the tab key at any time, it will hide all of your dockable dialog uh, boxes. This is especially handy for users who like to have a nice full screen view of their image and don't want their tools in the way. So now you can just focus on your image and paint and do whatever you want to do. This especially comes in handy for people who are very familiar with their shortcut keys and stuff like that. You know, you know all your shortcut keys, you understand all of those, and you want to work in GIMP without having all this other clutter in the way as you work. You can do that. And then if you ever want to bring your tools back, you just hit the tab key again and it'll bring them back. Now what I recommend doing is I like trying to get best of both worlds. So what I'll do is I will move my window in such a manner so that the toolbox and my other box over here has its own dedicated space in the desktop. And the reason why I do that is because whenever I'm zooming, I don't want this toolbox in my way whenever I'm trying to paint. Uh, it's just a recommendation. You don't have to do it. So I think that pretty well sums up a lot of the basics and we will go over some other things and more involved functions including actually finally getting to draw <laughs> in the next couple of tutorials.